Hello everyone. In this video, we will be starting you from a blank manufacturing cell to being ready to produce toolpath. We will apply toolpath to a part being held in a vise mounted on a machine. The machine will be defined as a machine with the correct kinematics. Prerequisites for this video. Number one, the part must be already on the platform. A coordinate system is a good idea for mounting, uh, not necessary, but a very good idea. Number two, a defined machine. Number three, a defined machining accessory. This would be the vice in our case. And number four, the NC shop floor programmer role. Before we get started, let's talk about the items that are needed in a machine shop to create a part. Number one, a machine. Number two, something to hold that part. Um, in our case, this is a vise. Three, the part or the target, if you will. Uh, number four, something to start with. This would be the stock material. And number five, a tool or tools to remove material. The items that are needed to manufacturing a part in the machine shop are the identical items that are needed in the software. Let's take a look at shop floor machining specifically. When shop floor machining opens, we get an empty manufacturing cell. Please note that you are in shop floor machining when in the manufacturing cell. I will now rename the manufacturing cell something more meaningful. Remember, this video is to show you starting with an empty manufacturing cell to placing toolpath on a part. There are faster ways to get this done, and I will show you one at the end of this video. But the goal right now is to understand the complete process. For the items that are going into the manufacturing cell, I have found that having them open allows for faster selection. Being new to the shop floor programmer, it does make sense to have these items already opened. As proficiency picks up with the platform and searching, this is not needed. You can see here, I have opened my machine, my vise, and my part. The first item to be placed in the manufacturing cell is the machine. Press the mount and import button. The system will flag you to search for a machine. The reason that the system is flagging you is because it recognizes that the manufacturing cell is empty. Go to the open machine tab to select the machine to be mounted. If you choose not to have the machine open, uh, you would do a search on the platform for the machine at this time. Left click the uppermost node of the machine. This will bring it into the manufacturing cell. At this point, the mount and import dialog is still open and waiting for input from you. This is indicated by the highlight around the mount and import button and the three toolbars located in the main window. The second item to go into the manufacturing cell is the vise. This is optional, but will accurately represent how this part will be machined on the shop floor. From the toolbar in the middle of the screen, select the import accessory button. The system flags you to search for an accessory. Go to the tab of the open vise. Again, if you did not open any items beforehand, you would search the platform now. Left click the uppermost node in the tree. At this time, the system is asking you where you would like to mount the vise. These selections are in yellow, and I will select the one in the center of the table. Once you click on it, an additional coordinate system appears. This is called the robot. With this robot, you can move and rotate the vise off of the selected mounting coordinate. We are not going to do that, so I will press escape or double click on an empty place in the window. You will see the mounted vise on the table. Now we will mount the part to the vise. Select the import manufacturing product button. The system will flag you to search for a manufacturing product. Go to the tab with the open part. If you are searching for your part, then you will do so now. Select the uppermost node of the open part in the tree. The system takes you back to the manufacturing cell and asks you to open the port manager. Press no. The system zooms in on the part and asks for you to select a coordinate system. Since you have one on this part, select it. It does not highlight, so do not expect feedback. Just click it. The system will jump to the machine mount section and say, pick an access system in the work area 
where the system needs to be mounted. This now indicates where you want to mount your part to the vise. Select a yellow mounting point on the vise. A robot will appear. If you left click and hold on an axis of the robot, just like when we mounted the vise, you can move the part off of the coordinate that you have selected. Double click or press escape to mount it. Double click and press escape once more to exit mount and import resources. Your part is now mounted. We will now create our stock to be used. I will expand the tree of the mounted part to better see what the system is doing. As you can see here, we have the name of the part to machine and publications. We'll look at this again after we define the stock. From the setup tab on the bottom of the screen, select rough stock. A stock creation window appears. Leave new 3D part selected under the location. In the mode area, select the shape of your stock. I will leave it at rectangle. Then click select part body button. Select the part in the screen. You can adjust your shape to be oversized, but for this part, I will leave it the same as the part. Click OK to exit the stock definition. If we look at the tree again, we can now see that the system has created an additional part to be used as stock. You have defined your stock for machining. The last item we need is a tool. If you have a tool that has already been defined, you can instead select the assign a resource button. For us, we will define an end mill, so we will be selecting resource creation. Select the end mill items, then select the end mill. An end mill appears on the screen. We will set some dimensions and select OK. If we look at the tree, we will see a newly created end mill. At this point, we are ready to define our toolpath. As I mentioned at the 150 mark of this video, there is a way to speed this process up a bit. I have launched the shop floor machining and closed the manufacturing cell that it opens with. In the search bar for the platform, I will enter part of the name of the machine I will be using. When I find the machine, I open it. With the machine now open, notice we are in product structure design, not shop floor machining. This is because NC shop floor machining cannot function in a machine. Now, select the compass and select shop floor machining. When you do this, NC shop floor machining recognizes you are in a machine, so it creates a manufacturing cell and mounts the machine for you. At this point, you can resume this video at the 320 mark by selecting the mount and import button. Thank you for watching.